In this video, I'm finally going to be able to test out the AstroTech AT80 EDT. Uh, I'm really excited for this and um, yeah, let's get to it because last night it rained and I think for the rest of the week, for the next five to six days, it's going to be nothing but rain as well. Um, so this is my one night to, uh, to test it out and I am super excited. All right, so let's go over some of the basics first. Uh, now, I can only go over the uh, uh, the specs on a superficial level because honestly, I haven't had a chance to use it yet. And the reason for that is because, uh, and this is no fault to AstroTech's uh, design. Um, I upgraded the uh, saddle plate on my HUQ5 Pro with this ADM piece. Uh, however, this ADM piece sort of cuts into the focus knob of a lot of the refractors um, and so I had to wait for these uh, extension bars to get in uh, so I can actually raise the height of thank you wow um, hopefully that's not too loud for you guys um, anyways as I was saying I had to wait for these extension bars to get in so I could raise the telescope and not have an impact the focus knob um, and they're finally here um, and that's why this thing sort of looks like an SUV right now. Um, so before I go on, I want to thank once again to Astronomics um, and their house brand Astrotech for sending me this AT80 EDT for, uh, for review purposes. Um, and I, I'm super excited for it because, you know, on the, from, a, from a spec sheet perspective, this is really impressive especially when you factor in the price of this thing so let me just go over the the, the specs as a sort of like a like a basic overview um, now this is an apochromatic triplet so you can expect really good color correction um, it is using uh, fk61 glass now this is not you know the o'hara FPL 53. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think this is equivalent to the previous generation of O'Hara's class, FPL 51. Um, but I have used this class in my other telescope, the AstroTech AT115 EDT, and I'm telling you that the glass is good. Um, it's no FPL 53, but it's good. And I think a lot of times it's really more important of how the glass is made it to the telescope versus what the glasses actually is. Um, so as I mentioned, this is an apochromatic uh, triplet refractor. Uh, this is a F6 system, focal ratio F6, with a aperture diameter of 80 millimeter. So you're gonna get a focal length of 480 millimeter. Um, and as I said previously, that the 80 millimeter refractor class is probably one of the best telescope that you can get when it comes to the upcoming winter season because there are, there's going to there's going to be so many um, winter objects for you to image and they're going to be larger nebulae which will uh, be well suited for a telescope of this size with this sort of focal length so before we move on with the night uh, you know the sun is still anyway so i can talk a little bit more about the telescope uh, I do want to mention briefly about the build quality and as you can already imagine with my previous uh, review of the AT70, AT70ED and my very own AT115EDT, uh, the build quality in the 80 edt uh, is exceptional, especially given how much you pay for it. Um, I may have not mentioned it already, but this refractor, this 80 millimeter triplet able chromatic refractor can be purchased for 850 US dollars at the moment. And when it's not on sale, you can get it for 950 US dollars, which to me is still a bargain given how incredibly, incredibly expensive uh, triplet able chromatic refractors are. So build quality. Well, the Duchio is nice and stiff. It moves up and down when you want it to, and it holds its place when you want it to. Lens cap does what a lens cap does. 
It doesn't fall off like the Radian 61. Um, the focuser is nice and smooth as you can expect, as I expected it from an AstroTech product. And it holds with the position just fine um, from what I can tell. Now, of course, I haven't used it yet because this will be my first night with it, but I expect nothing less from AstroTech when it comes to build quality, uh, and I am thoroughly impressed so far. You always want to start the day, well, not the day, really the night, when there's still daylight left. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, and I want to take advantage of this daylight to set up my rig. Let's go. All right, um, still haven't eaten dinner yet um, because I ran into a lot of problem with tonight's session. Um, for whatever reason, my mini PC is dead. Uh, I think the power socket within the mini PC is uh, uh, either disconnected or dead. But either way, I cannot power it on. Uh, luckily, I still have my really, really cheap and not great laptop that, can, that I can use as a backup. Um, so yeah, I guess this is another lesson for everyone out there. Um, when you're doing astrophotography, you know, be prepared for things to go wrong and be prepared to have a, a backup. Um, and then the second thing is that the William Optics Field Flattener Focal Reducer that I plan on using is not a good match for the AstroTech AT80 EDT. So therefore, I'm using my uh, SCA Hotec, uh, maybe, maybe it's the other way around, Hotec SCA one-to-one -one field flattener. Uh, that one works. Um, but the downside is that now I'm using the AstroTech AT80 EDT at its native focal length of 480 millimeters, which means that I'm a little bit more zoomed in I get a bit more detail with the uh, with the elephant's trunk, but I can I don't think I can fit the entire thing in my frame. Um, and also, I've lost like maybe an hour or two of uh, imaging time because I've had to reset up the thing because um, the field flattener, the Hotec one to one uh, focal uh, field flattener is far lighter than the William Optics uh, focal reducer. So my balance was completely off. So I had to redo the whole thing, redo my, uh, my polar alignment, redo my star alignment. Uh, and, and that took about an hour. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, that's actually a very typical night of astrophotography. You, you set up around sunset. Um, it's 9 p.m. right now, I'm not even I haven't even started imaging it. I'm just doing my test exposure and see how much I want to expose for. Um, and then it's going to rain later tonight. So I need to come back out here to pack up in about two to three hours time. Um, but you know what? This is all part of normal astrophotography. Um, I'm still loving my experience with the AstroTech AT80 EDT. Nothing that's happened tonight has anything to do with the telescope. It's just, you know, well, 
things sometimes don't work the way you plan it to. Um, and like I said before, it's always good to have redundancy in the form of either laptops or some sort of uh, image acquisition equipment. Um, so if one machine goes down, you can still image. Hey y'all, you know, <laughs> my friends tell me that when I say the phrase, hey y'all, it sounds really depressing. Well, hey y'all, it's been kind of a depressing night. Um, between my main imaging computer dying and me discovering that the William Optics focal reducer is not a good match for the AstroTech AD, AD-EDT and then having to rebalance because the focal reducer has a different weight than my one-to-one -one field flattener. Um, I think this night has been more or less of a bust. And uh, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but uh, PhD2, my guiding program is, well, it was screaming at me. Well, okay, it's screaming at me again. Oh, it stopped. Yeah, give it time, it'll scream at me again. Um, and it's gotten really cold. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, I get it, PhD2, it's, it's cloudy. Um, <laughs> all right, um, so it's gotten really cold. I think I have the blood of a reptile because I cannot produce body heat to keep myself warm. Um, I'm wearing two hoodies and a puffer jacket and a beanie to keep myself warm. Um, so uh, I think in order to do this telescope justice, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to throw in a night two um, to get a proper session to show you guys just how how great of a telescope this AstroTech AT AT80 EDT. Good God, that <laughs> that's a hard name to pronounce when you're cold and tired. Um, so yeah, I'll try to continue on with this video. Sorry if I sound depressed. I'm really not. I miss tennis. I don't know why I'm rambling anymore. Okay. Uh, <laughs> PhD2 is telling me to shut up, then I'll shut up. Hey, so we're back in the backyard and it's actually been an entire week since uh, the last time I uh, recorded myself and we've had nothing but rain for an entire week uh, which is great because you know California needs it uh, our fire our wildfire needs it our drought needs it but I'm really happy that I can pick up where I left off and really showcase what this AstroTech AT80 EDT can really do um, and you know I'm gonna spend the rest of my time and the remaining daylight to set up so I'm probably gonna end the video here, but I just wanna say that, you know, first of all, I have a lot of confidence that uh, the final picture from this telescope will look amazing. Uh, and secondly, I think that, you know, if anyone out there is considering uh, a change or trying to get their first triplet apochromatic refractor without spending too much money and get an absolute quality piece, this is it, um, you know, this is an extremely affordable option, but they don't sacrifice on craftsmanship. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, if my previous experiences with AstroTech is of any indication, I have so much confidence that this final picture of the elephant's trunk. So I've got a quick change of plans um, because I'm still under 80% full moon. I thought I wouldn't be able to image this, but it turns out that the moon won't rise until 12 a.m. And by then, this target is going to be behind my house anyways. So I decided to change from the elephant's trunk to, and I hope you guys will like this, the Joker smile. Anyways, take care, bye.